giving me the opportunity to present my work. So my talk will go a bit deeper in one case study, and I'm going to talk about the changing attitudes and childcare policy reforms in the federal states of Germany. And this is joint work with Kai Evo Miller from the German Institute of Economic Research. As probably many of you know, Germany was for a long time the prototype of a male breadwinner model. Only at the turn of the millennium, a series of family policy reforms led to a departure from this model and a turn towards the dual earner model. And in particular, there was the introduction of a parental leave scheme or a reform of the parental leave scheme in 2007 and two reforms um, that supported the expansion of childcare for children under three. The last one, the, the so-called KIFAC uh, in 2008, even implemented a right to a place in a childcare institution or with a childminder uh, for children um, after the first birthday. And it set up uh, investment programs that the federal states may use to create places. And this is important because in Germany, the federal states and the municipalities are responsible for the provision of child. So when we analyze the development of the public provision, um, of uh, childcare, we need to look at the subnational level. And here we see that in spite of the fact that there is a right to a childcare place for, for each child from the first birthday, uh, there's still a wide variety when we look at the coverage rates in the federal states. So what you see here is a development of childcare coverage rates from 1982 to 2016 for each German federal state. And there's a break because of change in statistical definitions between, I think it started in 2006. What becomes clear is that there's, first of all, a strong overall increase after 2006, and that there's still a large variety across the federal states. And the questions we are interested in, how can we explain these differences? Given the fact that each child from, from the age of one uh, has, a, has a right to a child care place. When we look into the literature that tries to find explanations for these continuous differences, there are basically three trends that try to uh, explain these. And one is focused on institutional factors. Here, the, the focus is on past dependencies, especially when we compare Eastern and Western Germany, focus on the different traditions between the East and the West and the provision of childcare. Some studies put forward cultural factors. There's one study that argues that are inspired by Catholic uh, values that impede expansion. And some studies argue that uh, party differences are important and they show that social democratic led lender governments facilitate the expansion of child care. However, when we look into the developments, we still find or we still think that there are several open questions because we have some of the uh, lender, such as Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, which are, have been governed for a long time by the uh, conservative governments, CDU and CSU, and, and they show quite a, a remarkable increase in provision, while other lenders, such as uh, North Rhine-Westphalia, which Obrin, which had a uh, SPD, the Social Democratic Governments, have actually been, been slower in uh, expanding childcare provision. This is considering the western uh, part of Germany, and all, but also in the eastern part, we see that there are continuing differences across the lander. For example, we have similarly high increase in the CDU-led state of Thuringia and Saxony and Saxony-Anhalt, but at the same time in the uh, SPD-led government uh, mecklenburg vorpommern So uh, overall, we think that it might be that the estimated relationship between parties and government and, uh, and the expansion of childcare plays might be driven by uh, other unobserved factors. So what we are interested in or the research question we pose is that whether the exchange or the change of attitudes towards mother's employment and childcare can actually explain childcare policy changes. And more concretely, we want to know whether we can explain differences in the extent of childcare policy reforms between the lender with differences in attitudes of the lender populations. Here we are uh, referring to the literature of, on policy responsiveness, which is by now a large literature that looks at the uh, relationship between attitude change and policy change. And typically find that there is a positive relationship for a variety of dependent and independent variables for several sequences in the policy cycle and different government levels. Often these studies however, only look at quite short time periods and they typically cover a wider variety of issues. But we actually know very little about the role of public opinion for the probability of policy change in particular policy areas. 
And what we think is also a shortcoming in these studies often is that they don't go all the way to policy outputs. And even though there's also studies that look at social policy responsiveness, welfare state uh, issues, we also there, we also miss studies that analyze the relationship over a long period of time, which is actually surprising given the fact that culture norms and ideas have been shown to play a really important role in the comparative literature on, on the welfare states. And this is particularly true for the family policy literature. Here it has been shown that country-specific care ideals shape family policies but also how family policy institutions shape attitudes towards childcare. So overall, we think that the combination of the literatures of policy responsiveness and the literatures on culture and norms and family policies uh, would benefit from each other. And we also think that there are even these uh, benefits from combining these literatures, think that there are strong reasons to study policy responsiveness in the area of childcare. Our aim is to advance these important literatures in several respects. First of all, we analyze the relationship between attitudes and family policy change on the basis of a concrete policy area, the change of childcare provision for children under three years. We have a longitudinal research design. We have used panel data over a long period of, of time. We um, cover the period of 25 years. And with that, we think it's possible to approximate the causal effect of attitudes on policy outputs. So do attitudes really drive the expansion of childcare? And we're also able to say something about the dynamics of the processes of policy change. So how long do politics need to react to changes in attitudes? Plus, since we have the information on coverage rates, that is how many places are being created uh, by governments, we also have a more differentiated uh, view on the developments in a policy area beyond expenditure data, which is often used in these uh, kinds of studies. So uh, this is what we're interested in in this paper uh, in a nutshell. So how is public opinion related to policy output uh, in the federal system of Germany over a long period? Time. We think the advantage of looking at one country, but on the subnational level, is that with this design, we're able to, to hold the macro conditions, for example, in politics and the economy uh, constant, which is difficult when we do cross-country comparisons. So how are we approaching our question? So we analyze the variation of attitudinal changes over time and relate them to the changes of childcare coverage rates in the land of. Attitudes towards mothers' employment and childcare, we control for a variety of factors that may influence both attitudes and uh, politics. We use the several questions from the General Social Survey, the ALBUS in Germany. These questions are being asked every four years since the beginning of the 1990s. These are the questions, for example, whether or not people agree to the statement uh, that a working mother can establish just as warm and secure a relationship with her children as a mother who does not work, or the rejection of the statement a preschool child is likely to suffer if his or her mother works. And we assume that uh, citizens who believe that mother's employment does not harm children are more likely to advocate childcare outside the home. So they are also more likely to advocate the expansion of, public pro of the public provision of childcare. We use a factor analysis to build an aggregate attitudes indicator and then decompose uh, this uh, indicator to, to arrive at an indicator that is net of individual characteristics and the regional context that individuals live in. So we, we are holding individual characteristics such as age, gender, family, composition, etc. Uh, constant. We then estimate a regression model and our dependent variable is the change of coverage coverage rates and independent variables are the changes of attitudes to approximate policy causality yeah. we the attitudes are lacked we have several intervening variables uh, the socioeconomic and demographic context such as population size or women's employment rates and we also take into account the political context here we have a dummy that for the for SPD government for social democratic government and we also for general time trends. Our hypothesis, first, the more progressive the attitudes towards mother's employment and childcare provision are in a state, the higher are childcare coverage rates. And second, the more progressive the attitudes towards mother's employment and childcare become in a state, the stronger is the rise of childcare coverage rates. And we also hypothesize that attitudinal changes will manifest in policy outputs only after a temporal delay. 
Okay, I now show you some descriptive findings. What you see here um, are attitudes and the childcare provision in Germany and the federal state of Germany. Uh, blue are the attitudes, the aggregate indicator. On the left, it's the attitude indicator of 1992. And on the right, you see in red the uh, child care coverage in 1994. The darker the color, the more progressive our attitudes or the more or the higher our coverage rates in a state. To give you an example, the mean attitude in 1992 is minus 0.34 and Hessen uh, has an attitudes indicator of minus 0.7. So it's much more traditional than uh, the overall mean in Germany, while uh, Brandenburg has an indicator of minus 0 0.07 and is in the most progressive um, state in Germany at that time. The same for, for coverage rates, has a coverage rate of 2.1. So 2% of children uh, below um, the age of three are um, have the possibility to, to use a childcare place in 1994, while the sh uh, coverage rate in Brandenburg is 54 at that time. What becomes obvious here, obvious here is the, the large variation uh, again, uh, especially between the eastern and the and the west part, which is uh, very well known uh, already. Now take a look at what happens. So this is the development over time, what you've just seen. And between 1992 and 2016, 2018 coverage rates. And it has become obvious, the colors have become much darker. So there are, this is an indicator for strong changes over time. The mean in, of the attitudes in 2016 is now 0.25 and coverage rates are 39.4. So the attitudes have become much more progressive over time in Germany and also childcare coverage rates have increased. Again, the, our example of Hessen and Brandenburg quite nicely illustrates the developments. Actually, Hessen has changed a lot from being one of the most traditional lenders now have become much more progressive over time and having increased coverage. So this is the descriptive illustration of the changes that have taken place. And we now turn to the question whether this relationship also holds when we control for the intervening factors. Remember that we control for, for time constant differences between the lender and the general time trend and the variables. And here you see the effect when we look at certain points in time. The uh, legend yet, but blue is same year, red is lagged by one year, uh, green by two years and uh, yellow or orange uh, by three years. And it becomes obvious that the biggest effect, and this, which is also statistically significant, is at two years. So an increase in, in one unit of attitudes increases the child care coverage rates by seven percentage points. And this is quite a large uh, effect size. It means that about one quarter of the changes can be explained by changes in attitudes. To conclude our findings, we show that lender whose populations have more progressive attitudes towards mother's employment do have higher ch child care coverage rates. Also, the more progressive attitudes become over time in a state, the stronger is the increase of child care coverage rates. So our hypotheses are, have been confirmed. We also can show that there's a lag effect and that politics need a certain time to adapt policy about two years. So we conclude uh, from our research that there is a robust relationship between attitudinal change and policy change and that family policy change is a result of the change of public opinion. Just to give you a brief outlook what what we aim at doing uh, next, first of all, uh, uh, do an update of the analysis to cover the most recent period, which might also be interesting to look what happened uh, during the pandemic. The second one is that we were thinking whether to enlarge the analysis to take into account more the attitudinal variation across groups. So we're thinking about whether the mean might not capture what is going on in the, in the federal states, maybe. So it could be that there are certain social groups that drive the demand in the lender. That is one thing. And if you look at the graph below, I've traded the, the difference between, this is only women, attitudes of women and the difference between women with most progressive and most traditional attitudes. So you see that there are differences and they are biggest in the, when we look at different education files of, of 
women. What is also interesting, the green uh, line shows that age is not a factor anymore. So they have converged. Attitudes of older and younger women have converged. But religion is still a factor. Or there we see differences between uh, within the group of women and also marital status not very important in having um, attitudes towards childcare. So it could also be that responsiveness is lower in, in states with large attitudinal heterogeneity heterogeneity and this is something we are interested in looking at in the future but i think i stop here thank you for your attention i'm looking forward to your questions